Hello, in today's class we will be learning about internet. What is internet and the history of internet? Well, internet is something which gives us access to the Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, Google, Yahoo and so many other sites. Today, one third population of the world uses internet regularly. It allows our computer to get information stored on the other computers far away. So, from a single small address to big projects, we can get each and every information through internet. The history. Who is the inventor of internet? Well, the answer is no one. There is no single person who can claim that I have invented the internet because there, there were visionaries who had a vision that such things should exist and there were the, the developers who has worked in that direction to develop the internet. So we can say that internet has evolved over the period of time. There were so many people's you know, work behind it. But the internet got its real start in the United States more than 50 years ago. But it was intended as a government weapon in the Cold War against the Soviet Union. Uh, well, today's Russia and its neighbor nations were known as the Soviet Union once before it was divided in so many nations. Uh, and in the initial years of in internet, it was used by the scientists and researchers only. But today, everyone and anyone can use the internet. In fact, our life is impossible to imagine without the internet. We are dependent on internet for so many things, starting from very small things to very big things. It was October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first man-made satellite Sputnik into the space. This Sputnik did not do much in the space, it just roamed around and sent the radio transmission signals on the earth. But yes, it had a greater effect on the America. Because America realized that uh, Soviet Union has something that, that, that di they did not have. They had the space technology and they are working on it. And at that time, American scientists and researchers were working on the making the bigger cars and better uh, TV sets. <laughs> And America thought it's a serious security issue because uh, at that time there was a Cold War going on between these two superpowers, America and the Soviet Union. So, the schools and colleges in the America introduced the subject regarding science and technologies like physics, chemistry, maths. There were private organizations who took the government grant to invest in the research and development and the federal government itself formed new agencies like uh, NASA, N National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the APA, Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to develop the space age technologies. But the main aim was the same, to secure their economy. Because uh, America thought that you see, Soviet Union has the technology to jam the telephone lines and at that time in 1950s the telephone line was the only communication medium in America I mean the highest developed tele, uh, highest developed medium was the telephone lines so if the telephone lines were jammed then there could be uh, you know worse thing can happen uh, it's like being blind for the economy. If you are blind just for one day, then think what would have happened. You would stumble across each and everything that um, that is in your way. You can't do anything properly. But for economy, if economy is being blind, if economy is uh, all communication sources are shut down for even for a few hours, then economy uh, that economy might not be economy after a few hours. Like. In those uh, crisis hours, if any other economy or nation attacks on them by a nuclear war or something, then the government officials who have the real authority to take the decisions, they won't be able to decide on anything and that economy would be destroyed in just few hours. So that's why the communication is so much more important for an economy. And at that time, America had the right to be scared. So that's why they formed the NASA and APA and all that.
Now, the real problem is still the same. What if the telephone line was shut down by the Soviet Union? So, there were the scientists, Mr. J.C. Alec Ryder from MIT, who proposed a solution for this problem. That was a galactic network of computers that could talk to one another. Not literal sense that computer can talk to one another, but they can send messages. He envisioned a globally interconnected set of computers through which everyone could quickly access data and programs from any site. Uh, such a network would enable government leaders to communicate even if the Soviets destroyed the telephone system. So, you know, they were not uh, only dependent on the telephone system. So, it was a good solution. And uh, the way he envisioned this, uh, uh, this thing, it was very much similar to the today's internet. So, this person is the very first one who has actually had the dream of the internet. There was Leonardo Leinrock at MIT who published the first paper on the packet switching theory in July 1961 and the first book on the subject in 1964. While he was working in MIT, he really wanted to work on this project that was packet switching. But for that, he has to convince his senior that was Mr. Lawrence Roberts here. Yeah. So, to convince Mr. Lawrence Robert, he did an experiment. He, uh, he, he connected a Massachusetts computer with a California, California computer in 1965 over the dial up telephone lines. And thank God the experiment was successful. So, both of them started working on this packet switching. The packet switching actually breaks down the data into blocks or other packets before sending it to its the main destination and that way each packet can take its own route from place to place. Like uh, if you want to send a message like uh, hello H E L L O W H E L L O okay. So each packet would have the one letter. First packet would have H, second packet would have E, third packet would have L, fourth packet would have L again, and the last packet would have O. That way the packet switching works. And this is Mr. Leonardo Leinrock and this is Lawrence Roberts who invented the packet switching and worked on it. Now. In 1966, this Lawrence Roberts firm was moved over to APA and he used this packet switching in developing the APANET. APANET is the first, uh, first network which, did, uh, which has so many computers interlinked. And in 1969, the APANET did its first experiment by delivering its first message and the first message was login L O G I N and for that the for the computers whom to this message was to be delivered the one was located at the research lab at U C L A and the second was at the Stanford and e at each place the computer was the size of the small house because at that time this compact computers were not available and they were using the main frames and main frames can be about of the size of house or a floor and the and the message login was short and simple and it was sent but it crashed on the way only the stanford received the message and that only two letters first two letters so, so actually this appanet delivered only lo and not the whole book again but still it was a bit success because you can expect any experiment to be successful at the very first experiment right but after that the appanet improved and it developed slowly and gradually in 1969, there were only four computers which were uh, linked to the ARPANET. But as the network grew steadily during 1970s, uh, people were using ARPANET like scientists and researchers and the US government defense agency.
This appointment was uh, actually meant for the U.S. Department of Defense only, but uh, the researchers and the uh, scientists were using it extensively to send the information and receive data and information. So it became more difficult them for them to integrate in, into a single worldwide internet. So again, there is a problem or rather a challenge, and there were these people, Mr. Bob Kahn and Winton, Winton Sir, who overcame this challenge. They invented uh, the transmission, transmission control protocol, that is TCP. Uh, this TCP actually manages the uh, transaction or rather transmission on the internet. I mean, all the requests that are sent and received. Uh, then later, there was another protocol that is IP Internet Protocol was was added. And today, we use the TCP and IP, TCP IP. And in today's time, TCP IP manages the 90% traffic of the internet. And we will learn about TCP IP later in detail in the in the next class, this is Mr. Winton Surf and this is Bob Khan. And yes, these two people are known as the father of Internet 2. Because TCP IP, TCP IP really changed the Internet. And if we, are, if we are using Internet today without any problem, without being Internet giant, and we are receiving all the websites very fast, it's because of TCP IP. Mr. T. Berners Lee. In 1991, this computer programmer introduced the World Wide Web. And after the introduction of World Wide Web, the internet totally changed. Because till now, till the World Wide Web was introduced, internet was used just to send and receive information. But after the World Wide Web, it became a web of information that anyone on the internet could retrieve and use it. So, this team Berners Lee actually gave us the open chamber of information for anyone who can use the internet. And he created the internet that we know, that we know and we use today. And then in the very next year, 1992, a group of students and researchers at the University of Illinois developed a sophisticated browser that, that they called, called Mosaic. Later, it was known as the Escape. It offered a user-friendly way to search the web. A very first popular web browser. Till the Internet Explorer uh, was launched, it had a very clean market share. But after the launch of Internet Explorer, its market share fell down around 90%. And, and the very same year, in 1992, the Congress, the ruling party at that time in America, decided that web could be used for the for the other purposes too, like uh, general people like us and the uh, different organization, private and public organization can use it too. So you know, all other multinational um, j literally joined at it to grab this chance as they knew as they knew that this was the future. They created their own sites, that e-commerce and e-selling and all those things started. And today we have the internet because of these people. So I guess thank you. That's it for the class.